think we could take that walk right away. <laughs> anyway, I'm just back from a wedding in Blackpool. It's a strange wedding, a strange affair. Man and a woman, the usual kind of thing. It's always all there was to it, as far as I could see. Anyway, I needed some uh, digs. Oh, sorry. Um, I believe that Balquidder is the morning side of the Trossacks. I was looking for some accommodation. <laughs> so I was walking along the street, and I saw this man with a dog, and I noticed the dog didn't have a nose. I said, how does it smell? He says, bloody awful. <laughs> anyway, see, I'm taking it to the vet to have it put down. I says, is it mad? He says, well, it's not very pleased. <laughs> Anyway, so I came across these, uh, uh, this accommodation. So I knocked on the door, and this woman stretched out the first floor window and said, What are you wanting? I said, I'd like to stay here. She said, Well, just stay there. <laughs> anyway, she came down and opened the door in her nightdress. I thought, That's a strange place to have a door. I went to the wedding the following day and um, just about to sit down in the pew and this chap said, she's been married eight times before. <laughs> so I just sat down and uh, do, he said, you know, she's been married eight times in a whisper that the whole church could hear. I kind of knew that because instead of playing Here Comes the Bride, the audience plays, here we are again, the happy as can be. Anyway, just at that, I noticed this woman with the longest nose you've ever seen. It was a beaut. Amazing. And the thing she could do with it, she was turning the pages of the hippo. Incredible. Very talented. Anyway, we went to the uh, reception, which was just quite near the church, you know. And uh, we were gathered round the, the, the cake for the bride and to cut it. And, and, and I noticed this woman again, and I thought, oh, that's a stutter of a nose. And I thought, I mean, I mean it was so lovely, you could have touched it. I, I didn't, but you could have. You know. But I thought, if things were liven up here, I'm going to touch her nose. You know. <laughs> Anyway, I, I, I wondered if I could uh, say hello to her. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's too easy to be rude, isn't it? And so, so I just nodded, and she nodded and cut the cake. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the bride was in tears. Mind you, so was the cake prior to that. <laughs> anyway, she, she, I, again, she, her artistry with this nose, I mean, somebody dropped a bun and she just... And, and I was most annoyed because I just had it over my foot at the time, you know, and I was just ready to lift it myself, but she'd done the business with the week, you know. <laughs> Incredibly talented. Anyway, I was standing chatting to this woman, and um, mid-sentence, she just stopped speaking, and she started sniffing the air. And she says, there's someone cooking cabbage in Manchester. <laughs> So we found ourselves uh, on the front, waiting on the tram car, going to go back to our, di uh, uh, to our accommodation. And I felt this nudge in my back. I thought, uh huh. What was it? Oh ho. I knew I'd get this part wrong. No, I think it was uh huh. Oh, that's that woman with the long nose. Well, at least I hoped it was her. <laughs> Anyway, just at that, she, she fell face forward and headed straight for the aperture of the tram line. And she got her nose lodged in the tram line. So a few guests and I bent down to pick her up. We could not dislodge her nose, so we just lifted her legs and ran her to the depot. Anyway, I need to go.